Tell me more about this group. I mean, you mentioned uh, in, in, in your piece that they're from Russia. Uh, they've actually hacked into 160 million different cards. That's amazing. They must be highly sophisticated. Yeah, I mean, there's no question these guys are good. And, and when it comes to hackers, it's often hard to figure out uh, identities behind um, all the IP addresses. But these particular guys are really well known, in part because they've been a major target of the FBI and the U.S. Secret Service for years. As you point out, they have hacked a uh, what one source said was over 100 different companies. But we're talking some pretty big names, J.C. JCPenney's, 7-Eleven, uh, NASDAQ. And now the latest uh, revelation is that they, they were also behind a Neiman Marcus hack. Um, that's 160 million credit cards over seven years. Uh, basically, people we've been talking to said these guys are some of the best of the best. Uh, so, you know, what can authorities do? I mean, they're located overseas. Does that make it especially difficult? It does. I mean, in this case, they not only have uh, linked this to a group, but they actually know very specific members of these groups. Last year, the, the uh, U.S. attorney in New Jersey issued an indictment that named five of them. They have a couple of them in custody. One is a, a relatively low-level guy. Uh, the other one uh, looks to be more serious. But for the ones that st are still in Russia, the, there's really not a whole lot that can be done. There's no extradition treaty between the U.S. and Russia. Not only that, the FBI and Secret Service has spent years trying to develop contacts at, at a very high level with Russian law enforcement to convince them to run, round these guys up to no effect. And mm. at, you know, at one point, uh, the FBI just decided that, that, in fact, as they were giving the names and dossiers of pretty high-level cyber criminals to the Russians, they were just using them for their own purposes, including recruiting. Yeah, Michael, before I get to Jay and, and talk a little bit about what it means for the stock prices uh, of these various companies that have been affected, um, what is the average theft here? I mean, are they, are they going after people in small amounts, or if they get your credit card, is it you know, basically for all they can uh, run up? You know, it's it's a uh, when you steal credit cards, it's the the way that you actually cash out is you sell those cards usually on underground sites. The people who buy the cards are usually different from the people who steal them. And what they do with them is they create fake cards and then they go into a, a, a store and try and buy something like a big screen TV, and then they can either sell the TV or uh, wow. exchange it, try and get it for cash. They can do all sorts of things. It's not necessarily the same people who are doing the hackers, the hacking. The hackers actually make their money by selling the cards. But when you sell 160 million cards at anywhere from 10 to $50 a piece, that's a lot of money. My gosh. Okay, you mentioned JCPenney was one of the companies that they hacked into. We all know, of course, about the Target problem. Uh, Jay Pulaski, when is it? I mean, we, we've seen that people don't really want to shop in these stores after there's a headline like this. I mean, you just look at the foot traffic mm -hmm. in Target and you look at their same store sales numbers and you can see people really backed off. What does a scare like this do to a company? Well, I think it, it reflects the fact that there is a problem, and it probably says the opportunity is more in the cybersecurity side. If you're an investor, you wouldn't look necessarily to maybe short the companies that this has happened to, because I think that effect will be less and less as it happens more and more, right? This is not the first, second, or third time this is happening. Or maybe hopefully we can, you know, to your point about investing in cybersecurity, we can get a little bit smarter about it and invest in the technology to prevent it from happening in the first place. Right, and, and there's clearly a race going on. These are very sophisticated people on the side of, of trying to steal the identity, and there's very smart people on the side of trying to protect the identity as an investor we can't really invest in the in the former so we should probably think about investing in the latter namely in the cybersecurity space as opposed to saying well I want to short every retail name because at some point somebody's going to steal some stuff in the stock you know and, and Michael unfortunately in the case of Target they had some opportunity to uh, be investing a little bit more on the cybersecurity front and, and even some of the information was right there in front of them but I know uh, as we've reported here that they uh, ignored a lot of these warnings. Warnings.